Welcome to Cape Chronicle, I'm Alex Gasser. We're joined today by Sarah Gardner, SEMO Food Bank's Chief Advancement Officer. Sarah, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Alex. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about SEMO Food Bank and um, how long you've been with them? And Well, I'm actually approaching my second year, which is amazing to me. Uh, prior to joining the Southeast Missouri Food Bank, I had no idea that there was an entity in Sykes in the town that I lived that was feeding over 82,000 people every single month. Yes, uh, the Southeast Missouri Food Bank covers a 16 county area from St. Genevieve down through the Boot Heel and as far west as Carter County. And in our 16 counties, we have five of the top 10 most food insecure counties in the entire state. So we've got a lot of our neighbors that are really struggling right now. Oh, wow. Um, and so what What's the difference between a food bank and a food pantry? Because I think a lot of people get confused by what the food bank does exactly. Yes, people use the two words synonymously and we're completely different. The way that I've learned to most easily describe it is if you think about the, the distribution chain, there's a manufacturer, there's a wholesaler, and there's a retailer. That's how goods get to individuals. The food bank essentially operates as the wholesaler. Food comes out of our building on pallets. Food comes out of pantries in bags and boxes. So there's only six food banks in the entire state of Missouri and only 200 nationwide. And of course, there's, there's thousands of pantries. So that's the big difference. We're do, dealing with things on a much higher level as far as volume. Gotcha. And so you have your location in Sykeston, and then just recently you opened a location in Jackson as that's, well. Is that's that exactly correct? right. Prior to COVID, we were feeding around 64,000 people a month. Then COVID hit, and that number jumped to over 90,000. And what that really showcased was that if 90,000 was going to be our new norm, our facility in Sykeston was not big enough to handle that inventory. So because we have such a large geographical area, it really didn't make sense just to make Sykeston bigger. Uh, it allows us an opportunity to have a second location to better serve our more northern counties. Uh, we have a volunteer station in our Jackson location. There, our volunteers assemble our backpacks for our Backpack for Friday program that every Friday, 1,100 students go home with enough food for the entire weekend. In Sykeston, our volunteer station is our senior boxes. And once a month, 5,600 seniors get a 35 pound box of food to help, to help maintain and, and keep them in what they need. Wow, so you said the numbers went up over COVID. Are those numbers still relatively high from before COVID numbers? Have they gone down? Yes, or? well, it's interesting because when I interviewed for this job in 2022, the, the numbers had come back down to about 70,000 and they really thought that 2022 was gonna be the reset year. And then gas prices went up and inflation really hit. So by last summer, every month, our numbers were increasing by over a thousand people. And so right now we're averaging about 82,000 month. Oh, wow. Right. That's, that's crazy. So what's something that um, the community maybe doesn't know about the food bank that you'd, you'd love to share? You know, I, I, I would love for people to really understand the scope and magnitude of what all we do and, and to, to really know to reach out to the food bank if they need help. If, one of the other components that we do is we help people get signed up with SNAP benefits, which is the old food stamp program. People don't realize that. There's so many ways that we can help people and get them dialed into specific programs, address their needs in their local community. We can, if you call the food bank, we can tell you what's available in your local community to get you the help that you need. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I think I remember because I toured your Jackson facility was there something where you're getting local produce or something of that nature? Can you tell me a little bit more about that program? Yes, we have a new, we got, we received a grant at the end of last year. It's a three year grant. It's called the produce prescription grant or uh, program, I should say. We're finding that we're, that a lot of these programs, they're really trying to get to the root of hunger and bad nutrition. And one of the ways is getting fresh produce into the hands of people, and then we're gonna follow their outcomes. So the program is, if they're identified through a Southeast Hospital uh, clinic, um, health department clinic, um, if they're identified as having food insecurities and they're willing to, to join this program, it's a one-year program, that twice a month they can get a box of fresh produce. 
We're looking at their health incomes outcomes at the beginning of the program and then at the end of the year. And we just want to evaluate and see if, if having access to good nutritious food can make a difference in the nutrition, then that gives us guidelines and uh, the direction to go in the future. So we're really excited about this program. It's a three-year program and it's going to be exciting to see uh, where we end up with it. Awesome. So can folks tour your facility if they want to see the Jackson facility or the Sykeston facility if they haven't seen before? Yes. And in fact, I always say if you really want to get the scope and magnitude of what we do, come into our Sykeston location. When you walk through our aisles and see the amount of inventory we have, it just truly puts the whole story together. You have a better grasp of it. Um, also going and touring the Jackson location is also a very good idea because you really get an inside look at our backpack program and how that works. So we encourage anyone that is interested and would like to, to come into our facility, call us. We'll be happy to show anybody our, our locations. What about volunteering? Do you need volunteers? We do. We do. <laughs> you know, it's, we, we desperately need volunteers. Our, those 5,600 senior boxes are packed 100% by volunteers as well as our backpack program. And in fact, during COVID, when we couldn't have volunteers in the building, they literally sent in the National Guard to pack those boxes. That's how important those are to our seniors. So we rely heavily on our volunteers. Uh, to offer up their time to help us with our, you know, providing for our neighbors. Is that every day of the week, certain times? Who do they contact if they want to volunteer? You can sign up online at semofoodbank.org and there's a tab that says volunteer. You can pick whether or not you want to volunteer in Sykeston or Jackson. We encourage groups that are 10 or more to go to Sykeston. It's, it's a larger conveyor system type setup. Uh, for 10 and below, or if just one person wants to go, go to Jackson and, and do the backpacks. That's a, that's a more one-on-one -on -one uh, situation, but yes, we always need volunteers. Awesome. Sarah, is there anything else you want to share with the community about the SEMO Food Bank? You know, we just, we survive on the generosity of others, and right now we're in the holiday season. It's hard for all of us. Money's not going as far, and our neighbors are in need, and the nice thing about when you donate to the food bank, for every one dollar that provides four meals. So even a five dollar donation is going to provide 20 meals. Uh, so if, you've, if somebody's never donated to the food bank before, please consider it. And it's, it's a great way to really help our neighbors. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking time and I highly encourage everyone else in the community to come and tour the facility because I've been to both and you don't understand or grasp the magnitude of what you're, what you're doing for the community unless you've actually seen it. And so I, I highly encourage folks to come.